So Jupiter's Galilean moons, as we found, are these four, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. And all of these are roughly the size of Earth's moon up to the, about the size of Mercury. And all of them have you know, very different uh, surface characteristics, as we can see in these images here. And so uh, part of our uh, mission today will be to use the uh, you know, tools of comparative planetology to understand why Europa has these cross-hatched um, stripes and why Ganymede has these grooves, why Callisto is very heavily cratered and why Io is covered with these sort of, you know, pock marks. So we'll try to understand that here. Uh, but first I have a poll question for you. So based on our, on the discussion we just had, why is it likely that Jupiter's large moons formed by an accretion uh, in a disk of material surrounding Jupiter? Okay, so our best answer here is E, all of the above support that hypothesis. So there's circular orbits in the equatorial plane and revolving in the same direction that Jupiter rotates. Those are all the same types of characteristics that our planets share with the sun, right? Um, I mean, maybe circular orbits isn't, you know, totally true here. Um, they have slight eccentricities uh, in the Jovian system, but they're actually very, very close to circular. Okay, the most interesting fact though is that the Galilean moons have densities with, which decrease with their distance from Jupiter. And we just saw comparing the terrestrial and the, and the outer planets that the terrestrial planets are rocky, metallic, high density, and the gas and ice giants are much lower density. And so this, um, the reason for this, as you discussed in last week's forum, is because of the temperature uh, gradient away from the sun, right? So very near the sun, it was impossible for um, gaseous materials and icy materials to condense. And so it just wasn't possible for the terrestrial planets to gather those materials. Those materials were able to condense past what we call the frost line. Um, so those icy and gassy materials um, could, could uh, form the, well, rocky and icy materials forming the core of those gas and ice giants. And then the gas was uh, able to uh, gravitationally attract around those rocky and icy cores. So uh, it's only that temperature gradient that gives us a decreasing density with distance. So the fact that this happened in the Jovian system tells us a couple things. First, it tells us that those moons formed in an accretion disk around Jupiter. But second, it tells us that Jupiter had enough, uh, you know, primordial heat from its formation to generate that kind of temperature gradient in the same way that the sun did, but on a smaller scale. Okay, so when we look at... Uh, these four Galilean moons, here's their density um, decreasing. I think this is probably listed in kilograms per cubic meter or grams per cubic meter. Um, so they're decreasing as you go farther. And something else that you can notice is look at their orbital periods. So 1.77 and 3.55, um, this 3.55 is two times 1.77, 7.15, Ganymede's period is four times 1.77. So these have a pattern of in their orbits, what we call an orbital resonance. Okay. And when we look at the interior of the planets, I'm not gonna give you all the details about why this is. You can explore that in the activity we're gonna do today. Um, but just to give you a feel for what those interiors look like, um, Io and Europa being the highest density objects have a metallic core and rocky mantles. Um, you can figure out what this blue layer is supposed to be when you do your activity. Um, Ganymede and Callisto contain more ice and rock. So Ganymede does have some metal in its core and a small rocky lower mantle, but its upper mantle is icy. And Callisto is not differentiated at all. It's just kind of a slushy mix of ice and rock. Okay. So you'll come back to the details for why, like what evidence we have for these uh, internal structures later on. 